welcome to the Town Hall Academy. We're going to talk about keep your woman customers for life. I have a heck of a panel here. And remember, the reason you're here, it's a summit for automotive aftermarket perpetual students where we go deeper than the headlines. Wow. Good to have you here. By the way, um, we're with Kim Auerenheimer, co-owner of CS Automotive, Brentwood, Tennessee. Hi, Kim. How are you guys? Uh, we're great. Um, she's presenting at Vision this year for the first time. Excited for you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm excited about it. Good. Ladies first two, Jonathan, I'll have to hold you to third since this is a ladies episode. And I guess, well, there's two guys here. But Kathleen Jerozic is from uh, Expert Tech Auto Repair in Englewood, Florida. Hello, Carm. How are you? Great, Kathleen. And Jonathan Ortiz, Foreign Auto Affairs. Foreign, no, Foreign Affairs Auto. Foreign yes. Affairs Auto. Isn't that interesting? Hmm. Wow. West Palm Beach, Florida. You've got some pretty sophisticated customers down there in West Palm Beach, I bet. In a good area. Yeah, in a good area. We um, yeah, nice clientele, nice uh, nice type of vehicles that are that are here. But I want to first say that I'm very excited to uh, be part of this panel, you know, uh, in in this accompaniment. Uh, Kathleen, I see that you were awarded uh, Female Shop Owner of, of the Year. Uh, that's that's amazing. Congratulations. <laughs> uh, that's fantastic. And then uh, Kim, I know that uh, your shop. Uh, was awarded the uh, Ratchet and Wrench uh, Award uh, a few years back uh, as as well. Yeah, it's our so, technician uh, of the year. We're so proud of Tanner. He's amazing. Ah, that's, good stuff. That's, that's really, yeah. I'm excited to be uh, to uh, collaborate here together with you guys here today. Well, thanks, Jonathan. I appreciate that. I was there to see uh, Kathleen get her award too. That was really cool. And actually, we did a podcast together, didn't we? With all yes, the award winners. That was fun. that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Hey, how many times? As a customer said that a new vehicle may look and smell nice, but the reality is they come with seemingly endless monthly payments and higher license fees and higher insurance premiums. Now, the better solution, remanufactured components from Jasper Engines, means a new lease on, new lease on life for your customer's trusted old friend. JasperEngines.com. And, of course, uh, the reason that everyone gets a chance to listen and or watch the Town Hall Academy is Jasper is, is right there for us. Look at, you know, we talked about, you know, the whole woman thing. And I, I'm, I'm telling you, I think I'd like to start this out this way. Tell me in each of your shops, Kim, Kathleen, and Jonathan, what's the percentage of women customers? I'll start with you, Kim. We have, um, our, our percentage is probably... Um, 50-50 only because um, normally we have, we would have, I, the de demographics typical of a shop is higher, but because we are just adjacent to a very large corporate center, we're kind of split. We have 50% um, of our customers are um, the moms the, the, uh, or the single mothers or the, um, cor the corporate mothers. The other half is corporate, um, uh, corporate dads they're just down the street we have five million square feet of office space about a half a mile away so our demographics are lower but it's it's interesting because the 50 percent that do come in are the decision makers i mean it's like we you know and and so ours is probably a little more a little different than most than the average but it's still pretty darn high kathleen woman vote uh, woman um woman customers I would say ours is a little over half. Um, you know, perceptively, it, I would say it's probably 60, 40, 60% 60 women. Um, I'm in a different unique area than Kim even. We are highly, uh, a highly retired community here. So our, our median age is about 64. Um, you know, we have, I have 100 year old customers that come in, you know, I have two or three of them that are still driving in their 90s and, and up towards 100 years old that you would never know are, I have carded them. So, um, but I would say a good, almost a little more than half, and we're seeing that edge a little bit higher every single year. Jonathan, your percentage of female customers. Mm -hmm. So our percentage of female customers is is majority, and we'll have more, few, actually a um, you know, more larger percentage of female customers versus males. Um, I think that happens to be tied to we're located in a very affluent area. So, um, you know, the, the, um, uh, the spouse in, in the marriage, you know, will, will possibly be taking the cars in for service. You know, maybe um, the uh, husband's at work and, 
uh, the spouse or the wife will be in charge of all the household items, you know, taking the car in, uh, you know, while the husband works. So we, we actually see more uh, female clients uh, coming into our store than, than male clients. So Jonathan, $6 million question. Can the females be more loyal? I really do believe so. I, I really, really, without a doubt, believe so. So let's talk about that. Let's drill down. I mean, we're, we're talking about keeping our woman customers for life. You say that they're more loyal. How and why? Let's, let's go. Yeah. So I believe that it comes down to an emotional relationship, you know, a relationship based on, on trust. I think that's going to be the most uh, important ingredient. You know, once a, once a, a customer, a female customer, I mean, this applies to all customers, male or female, but once a female customer finds a person or an establishment that they can trust, and feel comfortable with, you know, that's, that's really it. You know, they will go back to that place and, and rely on that, on that place and that establishment to, to keep the car safe, to keep the car running. And, you know, when issues do come up, you know, they're going to go right back to where they feel comfortable. So how do we do this, Kathleen, uh, Kim? How, how do we really get uh, a chance and an opportunity to build that loyalty? I think the one of the first thing, and, and Jonathan, you nailed it right on right on the, the head there, is um, it's relation, relational. Women are, by nature, more relational than men in many cases. Um, they want to have somebody that they, they can associate with, that they can trust, that they can understand. Um, and they, so there's so many factors to that. It's not only the the person that's behind the front desk or the technician, but it's also the environment and and pe women want to know where want to want to go where they know that they're safe, that they are understood, and that they're valued. And then the relationships are built from there. What are you doing, Kathleen, to make an environment that women want to come and hang out? Well, we recently redesigned our uh, client bathroom and our office so that it feels my goal with the designer was to have it feel like a living room and absolutely nothing like an auto repair waiting room. Um, you know, we have a real comfy couch, we have coffee and sparkling water and a workstation and a place to put your feet up and a lending library. It, it really is like walking into someone's living room. And that's the culture we try to keep and create through the entire process from the moment they walk into the moment they leave. You're doing the same thing? We, yeah, we have the same. When you walk in, um, we don't have, and you know, it's funny, I had an oil solicitor come in the other day. He says, you have no um, advertisement in your lobby. I said, yeah, I know. Isn't that awesome? Um, you know, we, uh, we're not advertising. We're not, mar we are our market. We are who we are. So when the customer comes in and the lobby is, is um, again, we have a sofa, we have fireplace, TV, coffee, snacks, um, you know, it is, it is, again, like a living room, like Kathleen said, um, we want to make sure that it's comfortable and warm. And um, I love when women will come in, it's like, okay, am I coming to a spa or am I coming to get my car worked on? It's like, well, I, you know, if you want me to get somebody to rub your feet, I'll be right back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you need. Um, that, and we, we often, uh, seriously, we have some space that I would love to convert to like a hair salon or something just because I feel like it's, you know, or I mean a manicure or you know, pedicure. Um, but it, it is something that you want the customer to come in and feel like they're at home, like they're at peace where they are. Um, I think the word that ever since we started biz in business back in 2006 was the, our ultimate goal for this facility that we are in now was I want a place where somebody doesn't come in and they feel like they've been slimed, um, slimed physically, you know, financially, emotionally, just that they feel like they're, that they're clean when they walk out in so many ways, you know, and, and clear. And so the, that's very, very key. Um, the snacks and the coffee, everybody has that. But is it presented in a way that is um, it's inviting and it and it and it's clean and you know um, and that again just that they feel like they're welcome as soon as they walk in the door. You know, it's it's almost like when when you look at the amenities that you have, you almost have to worry about making sure that they stay nicely in order, nice and clean. You know, uh, organized. Um, something you know, I don't want to I don't want to even go there. It looks dirty. So is that, is that on the daily clean list, Jonathan? I mean, do you have a, an area like that? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. You know, we, I think we're all combating the the shop stereotype of you know the grease and the grime, and you know when when a new customer is is coming into the shop for the first time, I mean you're always going to be combating that. So as soon as that first impression is made, you know, as soon as they enter the door and they look around, they you know they smell the shop. It, you know, it doesn't smell like a shop. It doesn't smell tiry. It doesn't smell. You know, it's got a very nice, pleasant smell. And as soon as they they see how nice and and comfortable of, of a shop. Uh, lounge you may have I mean that, that, that sets the table you know that, that's step number one and then number two is you know establishing the personal relationship with the customer and then you know continues to go on under there but that first impression is just so key you know that when they first open the door what do they see that is that sets the table you know I've, I've heard over and over again um, the top shop operators they say we don't want marketing and signage and, and that stuff in our in our waiting room and let's call that institutional marketing where the manufacturers and the suppliers love to come in and give you feature and benefit type displays. You know, I think there was a point in time where it was great because they were educational, but they actually almost look like you're saying institutional. And that's not the first impression that you want to have. So Kathleen, you told me that flowers are now in order for your shop. Yes, I have a standing weekly order with a local florist. They come in every Tuesday morning and swap out the old arrangement for a new one. And, you know, it's a great way for them to get their name out there. So we're cross promoting each other. Um, but it really just adds a nice homey living room kind of feel. And we have fresh cut flowers in the office every day. Uh, last week, they were purple orchids. And this week, you know, they're white and they're uh, red flowers so for Valentine's Day and they're very creative. I have absolutely nothing to do with what they look like except I have to keep them alive for a week. <laughs> so, <laughs> but they're very hardy. They're really, really nice. So that's, that's been a, a, an addition that people have really noticed. So what, what she just described to me, Kim and Jonathan, is a client experience. And, you know, we just talked about the way the shop looks. Can we go beyond, you know, the looks? Can we go beyond the flowers and dive a little deeper into the client experience? Do you have anything really unique and important to share? Anyone? Okay, I'll speak. <laughs> um, one thing I want to add into what we do in the shop is the one thing we, we love to um, have our essential oils going and oh. have that, um, you know, sometimes we pick our own and it's more like energy or awareness. Um, I wish they had one like a spending one, but you know, we're working. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah, Tell me how you really feel, Kim. Yeah. Well, <laughs> actually, it's instead of the spending one, they should have the just say yes oil. Just, there yes. you go. There you go. <laughs> so all that being said is um, I think part of what our goal is is to is to build, we start off by the client experience. They walk in the door and they say, wow, this is different. Um, you know, whatever is different, whatever your different is, is, is different. And not everybody has to have a living room in their, you know, pretty soon everybody's gonna have a living room in their shops. But I think um, you gotta ha walk in and have a, a different experience for the customer. Beyond that initial experience is the experience of um, developing their trust. Um, you know, there's certain key things like, you know, just transparency is our word of the day here at CS Automotive is, you know, how are being transparent and digital vehicle inspections are right now the number one way, in my opinion, for transparency. Um, price everything out, have everything very available for the customer. Um, women are more, um, once they're more tech savvy, I mean, I think they're more savvy these days. And they're going to, you know, especially with um, decision making, is if they're the primary, they're going to do their homework because they got to go back and answer to, in our case, like we're with Jonathan with a more affluent area, they've got to answer back to their husband. So they're, they're making sure that they're making the right decision for the safety of their family. But it's about being transparent and about being open and honest and not having them feel like we're getting one over on them or taking advantage of them. Mm -hmm. I agree 100%. We... We strive to educate all of our clients, uh, especially the women, you know, so that they feel that they are empowered to make an informed decision as to what they're doing. Um, I know personally, I have always taken the approach to explain to people that 
I want you to understand what you're agreeing to before you just say, go ahead and fix it. Um, especially if there's any um, hesitation in the process, you know, they're not really sure, you know, I want you to be comfortable and understand what can I explain to you what, you know, we use the Napa service assistant, we use videos, digital vehicle inspection has been a huge piece. Uh, my service advisor brings the client around her workstation to show them her monitor. Um, so it's not like we're hiding anything from them at all. So like Kim said, transparency is a huge thing and education. Yeah, and I can add to that as well, and I agree, those are, those are wonderful points. And also what we need to take in consideration, and, and I take my hat off to all the women in, in the world that, that manage, you know, their families, and, you know, they're, they're taking their kids, they're dropping their kids off at school, you know, and they have to do all the, you know, the, the daily running around, and all in the mix of that, you know, they have car issues, or they have to drop the car off for service. So, you know, they, they may enter the doors with a high level of anxiety, because they're always, you know, thinking of, okay, well, I still have to pick up my kids, I still have to do this, I have to run this and I still have to do this and you know we have a limited amount of time in the day so you know I, I think it's it's so so important to you know to create that level of, of transparency and, and to create that that level of you know comfort you know um, assure them reassure them that everything is going to be okay reassure them um, that they are they did make a good decision to bring the car here and that we are going to you know take care of the car uh, for them and, and get it fixed you know in, in the best manner Good stuff, everyone. Talk about uh, females that work inside of your businesses. How important is having woman customers for life? And is it easier if they're actually speaking to a female? I, I, I didn't realize that, that um, Kathleen had a female service advisor. So, I mean, I didn't know, I didn't know she had one, but I happen to have a, a female service advisor who wasn't, uh, she was with me back when she was started off as a CSR. So in, at our front desk, we have a customer service rep um, who handles everything before the vehicle gets to the shop and then after the vehicle leaves. While the vehicle is on property, it's our service advisor. And so, um, Lori started off as a customer service rep. So I had a service writer that was a male and he was, he was amazing. Jeff was great at the rapport and, and developing these relationships with women. And, and, um, you know, I just thought he was amazing until I had Lori as a service advisor. And then I realized that that just, it was easier for her. She didn't have to try so hard to develop these relationships and, and build this trust and, if, if she doesn't go a week without uh, somebody, you know, getting emotional or crying because it's like a hairdresser or a bartender up there at the end of the front desk, um, it's, it's a great week. Um, but it is, she has developed these friendships and, and, you know, we had, we had a customer um, and I was just a real brief story, but we do have a customer that came in. Um, was real hesitant at first, not real sure. She is the family decision maker for the um, the family because her husband is um, a full time employee or uh, has a business full time. Um, Jeff started the relationship with her, developed her, and she became one of our our best customers ever. Um, we, you know, Lori was able to take that relationship to even the next level, and. Um, we were going through this situation that she found out that she um, was diagnosed with uh, stage four breast cancer terminal with young children. So because this relationship that first with Jeff, with Lori, and then myself have developed, we became friends. And so, you know, post, post her, you know, she passed away two days after Christmas, we've been able to come back in and help with her family because we have developed this relationship with this female customer who had needs that, nobody could understand, you know, but maybe another mom or another, you know, another female. However, I will say that you don't have to have a man. It's just it makes it a lot easier for sure. I can echo that exact same scenario here. We, I can't tell you how many times we've had similar situations here. And you have two female service writers? Uh, I have one female service writer and a female CSR. Okay. And our, our entire front of the house is female at the moment, it's not always by design, but um, <laughs> I, you know, I have a little 
panel window here that I can see through, a little stained glass window I can see through. I can't tell you how many times a week I see Jamie come around and sit on the couch next to a client and just give them a great big hug or, um, you know, they celebrate the wins and, you know, oh, you got a new job, you got a new car. And um, some just come by just to say hello, you know, in between oil changes and, and, and regular service. And it's, um, Oh, I sent one of my cus my friends down to you, and I just wanted to come by and give you their name. I mean, they're they're personal referrals, and they do they we develop real relationships with these people. And I can't say that a, a male counterpart wouldn't do the same, but I have noticed over the years that it is a natural female tendency to build a relationship with whoever you are working with, and it does create an an incredible amount of loyalty. I think I'm hearing secret sauce here. Yeah. <laughs> really? I mean, I, I, I mean, out of both of you, Jonathan, what, what do you, do you have a female on the counter? I, I don't have, I, I don't have the privilege yet. You got to uh, get one. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> For sure. Tomorrow. Yeah. There's Tomorrow. an ad Today. going in indeed. <laughs> Ladies, Tonight. look out. <laughs> I, you know, it's just when you get right down to it, it the, the, the statistics is about 65 to 70% of the, of the customer, people bringing in cars are women. So why not diversify that? You know, the, we're already working on women technicians. Let's also talk about women, you know, at the front counter. Absolutely. Let's, let's dive a little deeper. Um, here I am listening to this podcast, driving down the road, listening. I'm, I'm, I'm inspired. I, I just heard Kim's story, I heard Kathleen's story, and I'm like Jonathan. I don't have one on my counter yet. <laughs> so, Jonathan, <laughs> for the sake of the listening audience, what does that do to you? And do you think you'll ever get there someday? And if you do, here's a three question combo that Carm likes to throw out at you. And then, how would you go about it? No, I'd, I'd, I really would, would enjoy uh, seeing one day bringing in a, a woman um, sales or not sales associate, but uh, service advisor uh, or customer service rep. I really would, would enjoy, uh, enjoy that. I think that would be a wonderful fit. Um, you know, in, 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 I guess, attracting um, a candidate, um, you know, I think that we would, we would start the same way in attracting, you know, any type of candidate where we, uh, what, you know, we'll, we'll start the recruiting process and start the interviewing. I, I don't know how we would, you know, specifically search for a, a woman uh, advisor. I mean, there's a non-discrimination, I, I guess, as, as well, right? <laughs> but, you know, d you know, deep down inside, we would probably want to favor, you know, bring in a, a, a woman advisor. Um, We've heard over and over again on the show now, 500 plus episodes, four years of doing this. Some of the secrets came out. And it was just simple. I'm out having dinner or lunch and I get waited on by this unbelievable high level customer service waitress. And I give her my card and say, Hey, would you like no weekends? Would you like some normal hours? And it starts, it starts the relationship. You may not get a call for who knows two months, two weeks, right. but it, that it's almost like you're doing your own recruiting. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure though, that we don't, takes us off the wrong path because absolutely um, the one of the I'm going to plug here one of the um, the classes that I'm teaching at vision is on branding and so I think it's more important first that you go and this is what the class um, is based on it's more important to go back and find out who your customers are right. and so not every not every shop's going to have 70 percent or 50 percent of the women in shops so you got to go back and know who you are as a shop before you start taken out this advice and hiring a woman at the counter because if you're at a speed shop it's probably not gonna you know or you know something that you know you're selling a, dino a four by four shop no right right yeah so you're you want to make sure that you know who your demographics are before you design you know you do your ideal design of who's at the front desk um but for us um jonathan and i you and i are in a very very similar um uh demographic Mm -hmm. um, I do have a the I do have a lot of women, but I also have a lot of men. Um, but if it weren't for that, if it weren't for that, um, the uh, business center a half a mile down the street, um, I I would probably be ninety five percent women. You know, mm -hmm. bringing it, uh, dropping the kids off from school. You know, the Lexus LX, you know, uh, four seventy. You know, that type of that type of customer. Right. So, um, I just want to make sure that we're not 
leading. No, I totally agree, Kim. Thoughts. Thanks for thanks for putting you know kind of if you will a pin in it. Uh, I'm I'm not advocating that everyone should go out and get themselves, <laughs> but it was kind of I was playing around with Jonathan and if I can get his instantaneous. <laughs> Jonathan thing, Jonathan's you know. uh, shop fits a demographic. To get yeah, I, I I was just putting him on the spot. I, I mean, he's a <laughs> smart guy. I was putting him on the spot. You, you know, and, and while I was while we were talking the last few minutes, I, I looked up. You're talking about knowing your customers, right? I looked up on our social media. I looked up our Instagram profile and I checked the demographics of our Instagram audience, right? So we're an auto repair shop. I don't know if you, if you can see the, the screen at all, the demographic pie chart, but it's 56% men and 44% women. Wow. Right? On Instagram? So on Instagram, so 44% of our total audience are following an auto repair shop are, are women. But I wonder, I bet Facebook's going to flip the other way. It's because then you, yeah, that's going to, that's interesting. Very, very much. You know, I mean, because, I mean, are, are women that interested in an auto repair shop that are actually following, you know, the, the, the daily activities? It's, it's a very interesting. Uh, I'm glad you brought that up. And I want to, I want to jump into social media here in a sec. Now, performance and reliability, that's what Jasper's remanufactured diesel engines provide mile after mile. Jasper's running complete engines are dynamometer tested with horsepower and torque ratings recorded. And there's a nationwide warranty included too. talk about dependable service. Thank you, Jasper, for your supporting the Town Hall Academy. Now, social media. Thanks for bringing it up. Mm-hmm. What are we doing uh, for that? I mean, are, are, are you posting? When you think of a post, Jonathan, mm-hmm. you, you think of, again, you, maybe your demographic that you just yeah. looked up in Insta- Instagram, but what's going on with that? Yeah, I mean, when we look at our Instagram profile, you know, we, we think the content that we generate, we're we always have to remember who we're posting to, you know, and when I look at, you know, some other shops, I see their, you know, the uh, content they're posting and they're very just car, you know, car Z or, you know, very garagey, you know, where they're posting a car inside a lift. And, you know, it, it's, it's, I guess to create a, a, a balanced audience, you have to create content that may be relevant or may engage, you know, a, a broader audience, you know, both men and female. So, you know, we'll, and one of the things that, that we do here in our customer service side is we make these really neat uh, handmade cappuccinos um, where we'll print an image on the, on the, on the milk foam, right? So if you haven't seen it, it's amazing. You know, check out our Instagram and put a little plug in there for us. Uh, check out to our West Inst- Palm Beach. Are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But look at our Instagram profiles. It's Foreign Affairs Auto. But you'll see the cappuccinos that we, we uh, handcraft for our customers. So we use that a lot to put in our Instagram content or our Facebook content in our posts to make, you know, really just creative uh, type of content that will, you know, engaged to a more broader audience. So even though we're an auto repair shop, you know, we're, we're attracting uh, followers that you know, may not have followed just because we're a shop. I think too, the one thing that I don't know why we haven't done in the past, but we were just talking about it um, last week is, is it's also important on social media to celebrate the, the wins in our employees' lives. So for instance, this came up because we have a, one of our car washers that's getting married this weekend. So we're going to be making sure that we post, you know, a picture of, of him getting married because um, that makes us, you know, in our lobby, you walk in on the, on the wall are um, ra- just basic kind of random photos of all of our employees and their families. Um, we have a picture of there where Tanner is, you know, they're at having their next baby announcement and, you know, and that's up there laminated and clipped up on this, on this, um, this really clean linear display. And what that does is it allows the customer online or in person see that the people behind the desk, people behind, you know, out in the bays are people with families and they uh, give that allows them to relate them to them as well. So I think social media can't like, I love that. It can't be just carsy. It's gotta be, it's gotta be just life. And, um, it's, it's fun to, to, you know, have facts of the day on automotive, but how about, you know, something more random, like just happy Valentine's day, you know, or whatever. So Mm. I think that's very important. We had a recipe for cheddar, cheddar cheese soup last month, I believe. I, th- I believe it was January. And I got more comments when people walked in the door about the recipe for the cheddar cheese soup that I put on the Facebook page. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. I mean, our clients want to know about us, mm-hmm. you know, and, and that's part of the culture and the, the relationship building and the client experience. You know, we, 
we usually have some little giveaway every month and February is, um, is if we had some folks in uh, maybe about an hour and a half ago or so that were so excited because one client had left with a little box of conversation hearts. And I don't know if you're aware that Nico no longer makes those. So uh, the new company did not put out the conversation hearts. So they're apparently very difficult to get this year. So uh, that is something that I do every year. We put a little, little box of conversation hearts in everybody's car in February with a little thank you sticker on it. And, you know, it's not a huge cost but it's a it's a value-added service and so yeah. I had two or three people come back in the door going hey she just had that box of conversation hearts can we have one too <laughs> and yeah. so it's a funny thing you know just the little tiny things that make all the difference in the world to your clients you know when I post pictures of my kids you know how are the babies like children aren't babies anymore mm -hmm. but they they want to know about what we do and how we interact and that Jamie went kayaking over the weekend and you know how was the farmer's market it, it's just they really do want to know that we are real people with real lives outside of this business, Monday to Friday, eight to five. Our family to yours. That's kind of what I just heard from all of you. And, uh, and, and that it just, just so cool. Um, I, I want to, I want to go back to that bartender thing. Cause I wrote that down. I thought that was so important. Um, is, is can you does does it matter female or male bartender you know a relationship it it, it doesn't do, there's no bounds between the sexes is there no okay no okay cool now Kathleen I love your little ideas and I'm sure both you all do that where's your energy come for all of that or are you just do you love the marketing side of the business I actually love the marketing side of the business I I miss. I'll tell you, I started in the front office. I was the CSR, the service advisor, the head bottle washer. I did it all. And, uh, you know, with growing things and hiring amazing staff members that have taken that over, you know, I miss that client engagement and interaction. So through the marketing, I'm able to do that and still you know, work on the business. You know, my job is, um, my job is car count. You know, at the end of the day, my job is car count. So I'm all about client engagement and bring, what's going to bring people in the door and interacting in whatever way I possibly still can. Because I will say, as the business grows, that's the one thing I miss is getting to sit on the couch and give those clients a big hug and listen to the stories about their grandkids and, you know, their 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 puppies and their kittens. And, you know, our like I said, our market is kind of unique where sometimes I'm probably the only person that these people interact with all day long. So I, I want to make sure that that experience for them is a very rich one that they, they look forward to seeing again, that, you know, when they, they, if they have an unfortunate breakdown that they're like, Oh, well, great. I get to go see Kathleen. Mm -hmm. So, or Jamie or whoever's in my front office. And by the way, speaking of, I had a male service advisor not that long ago and he was wonderful. It's, it's about their enthusiasm, energy, and the culture that you create. Um, but yeah, I, I, I just love people and I love to help people. And I feel like that's what we do at the core of our business is help people. I think, um, I, yesterday would be Valentine's day. Um, I walked in and, um, there was a dozen roses and I said, Oh, who sent these? And Laura said, no, I bought them. I'm going to give them away to the customer. <gasps> And so, um, and we had talked about that before and, you know, last year and I completely spaced out on it. And um, I think it's important to empower your employees to be able to do, to, to do those extra little things, you know? So, um, and it was really, here's where it just blew my mind. So Lori brought in these flowers and Tanner, our technician brought in heart shaped candies with the both in the same intent, not knowing that you know tanner's like well let's do heart-shaped candies in our in our um uh our little gift bags that we leave in the car for the day and you know that type of thing our little love notes that we do anyway so how about heart-shaped candies so both employees were just you know we empowered them and you know of course i'm reimbursing them because i don't want them to come out of their pocket but they went off on their own and did that and i just i literally walked in and i was so thrilled you know on my flight over here to Vancouver, that was one of the thoughts that I had as I was going over our notes for the uh, for the show here. I was thinking, 
um, what a perfect time. I mean, when you think about the holidays and all the events, I mean, every month in our society, someone has invented a holiday to spend money on or to get a gift. Am I, am I right? Yeah. <laughs> and, yes. and, and every month there's something going, sometimes twice, three things. And yes, I was thinking, have- what do you do for Valentine's Day? It's perfect. Yeah, we get, yeah. And, and it was the sweet, the, the best day, the best of our, all of our customers was, it was a dad. And he walked in with his um, little three-year-old daughter. And so mm. we gave the daughter the rose. And it just was, I mean, it made, it made us happy, but it made his dad even, or, her, or the little girl's dad even more happy. And so, you know, of course, he got the chocolates. <laughs> Okay. Uh, you know, we, I print out for, I have a, a young lady that comes in a couple hours a day after school. Um, she's a high school student and she just does some filing and some fun stuff. But we have our board where we put uh, the clients that are coming in uh, for the day for their appointments on it. And I printed her out the entire year of the na- from the national day calendar.com, what every day is. And so she decorates that board with national peanut butter day and, um, you know, draws cute little pictures and things like that. So it, it, you're right, Carmen, there's a holiday for everything. And, um, you know, I already have my March giveaway planned out and, you know, it's March is a huge hit. We do Girl Scout cookies. So I, I blow it out a little bit, you know, come the end of March when they start drying up, people are like, uh, can I get a box of those? <laughs> sure. Come on in for a set of tires and I'll give you a box of Girl Scout cookies. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm I'm loving where this is going. I think this is going to be one heck of an episode for people to go to when they when they need to think about uh, building and keeping uh, uh, woman customers loyal for life. One more sh- one more time, shout out to Jasper. As the average age of vehicles keep rising, your customer's old engine or transmission is going to wear out. And when that day comes, Jasper will be the name to remember. Jasper's remanufactured products cost considerably less than a new vehicle, so it just makes sense to choose Jasper for your customer's drivetrain solutions. Okay, I want to give you all a last word coming up here, but I have a couple of comments to make. In, in, in summary, uh, Kim, you said earlier, uh, you said, well, okay, we're all going to have living room-like lobbies until everyone has one. I just loved that point. You talked about DVI. 10% of the industry is in it, and if you're in it now, You've got a competitive advantage until the rest of the world catches up. And it doesn't matter if it's a living room, if it's DVI, or if it's improved environment and it's a client experience, you will all take as top shop operators, whatever the next step is. And we can put our vision, and our, you know, crystal ball on and try to figure out, hmm, what's the next big thing that we must do at the level you're at you will evolve and figure it out. You will always be setting the pace. You're not quite sure what it's going to be, but you'll be there. And, and I, I think the whole point of what we do uh, as a podcast and, what, and how we give to the industry to get all ships rise, so we take the top 5%, make them tenors, and then to the 20s, improve the entire image of our industry. And as we say, we're the dealer alternative. Look at what some of the dealers are doing. And they're really doing aggressive things. Doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to get an appointment right away and your car fixed right the first. It doesn't mean all of that, but they're trying to bring a, a much better experience. So we have to be so careful of that. Now, I want to go around the table with kind of a summary, and and I and I want you, if you will, to give me your opinion on the words reliability, safety, honesty, trust, integrity when it comes to your woman customer. Um, Kathleen, I'll let you go first. All of those words should come very first when considering any client, especially the women clients. Um, you know, I, I feel like word of mouth for a woman is, is huge to get a, a woman client in the door to keep them. But, you know, if you don't treat your women clients with respect integrity, honesty, all of those things, they'll cost you way more clients on the other, on the other side of that than any one man will. Um, you know, we have such a social network as females that, you know, we'll either raise the entire ship or we will burn it to the ground. <laughs> so I, I think that it, you're treating all of your clients with a total respect and, um, how you would want to be treated. The golden rule is, is number one in our industry, I think. And that is so important to build those long-term relationships and keep the clients coming back 
and telling all their friends how amazing you are. You know, you, you said it perfectly. And, and I don't want anyone to think that I don't care about male or female. It's to me, a customer is a customer. And that's exactly what we have to do. Safety, honesty, trust, integrity, and all this for every customer. However, some of us don't do a really good job in making the woman feel part of the family and, and involved in, in the environment. And that's, that's what our driving force and idea is here today. Jonathan. Mm -hmm. No, it, it, it has to do with, with the respect, you know, uh, treating a, a woman um, as a decision maker, treating her with all, you know, with all integrity and with all uh, respect for, for who has, uh, for her as a person, you know, she's your customer. She, you know, it, it she's not going to be going back to her husband to ask for, you know, his, his decision. You know, she's a decision maker. It's her car. You know, she's the person behind the steering wheel. She's the person that, you know, you are in, you are responsible for the care of her car. So, you know, making her feel important like that, making her feel that you are, uh, that she that she can trust you as her as a professional that's going to take care of her car. You know, those are the, you know, the prime objectives that, that you have to achieve with, you know, with their female customers more than so much with a male customer. You know, a male customer will come to you today, you'll fix it. He may go to another shop next time. It, you know, he, he's open to explore, you know, female customer. If, if you have her trust, she will be back to you every single time. And, you know, there are some, there are some things, some never says that we didn't cover here. And, and, and Kim, maybe you could do some of those never says for us. I'll let you sum it up. That is like a, a knife in my back. Um, I left, you know, I came from a male dominated um, uh, business or commercial real estate was male dominated. Um, and there's certain terms of endearment that thou shalt never use with a woman. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, sweetie. Uh, sweetheart, darling, um, you know, um, anything like that. And, and I know, and here's my thing is I know that it's meant well in most cases, but it's often with the tone and, and I mean, if it's, you know, if it's said in the right way, but when you're trying to talk to somebody and explain something to them and, you know, especially, especially when you're trying to explain the say, you know, that this is important because, and then you throw in a sweetie, then it's just, you've kind of just voided that whole conversation because you've, you've changed that to talking down to the, to, um, to the female customer. Um, another thing is don't assume that you need to speak to their husband. So you've got the estimate ready and you're calling. It's like, you know, mm -hmm. oh, hey, um, you know, Angie, I was calling for, um, for the repairs. Do you want me to talk to your husband or do you want mm -hmm. me to talk to you? You know, it's like if Angie dropped the car off, then talk to Angie unless she defers, you know, and that's, and that's, there's nothing wrong with that, but don't assume that um, you're always going to speak to the husband because he's going to make the decision. And um, just, uh, on that real quick, I think one thing that we need to really focus on is the fact that when women make decisions on their vehicle, most of the time, the first thing they're going to ask is, is it safe? They've got their kids in the car with them. They're, you know, maybe they're carting around their, their elderly parents or whatever, or somebody else's kids. Um, first thing you've got to assure them if that vehicle is safe or not safe. Um, and then financial comes later. Um, so those are, you know, there's just some key things. Um, and then the one thing that just, I, I do get, have the, um, a wonderful opportunity to be able to travel around and visit a lot of shops. And I think the culture is so important. Get rid of the tool, truck, nudie, calendar, <laughs> you know, get rid of the paraphernalia that is not, it's not um, appropriate in the workplace. First of all, it's not appropriate in the workplace, number one. Number two, what if you have taken you know, show you know, them something that's not safe um, you know, the vehicle and, and that does happen on occasion. So, you know, there's just those key points just to, to remember to, to clean it up and you know, behave. <laughs> Sorry, mm -hmm. I got off on a tangent because that is a stickler from the, of mine. Hey, that's why I had you go last. Because <laughs> I talk a lot. That's what no, <laughs> no, that is not true. It's the tangents that you, I love where you go with them. Boy, I'm usually the one accused of that, Kim. So. And, and, you know, 
<laughs> it's it's rare that I could ask someone to summarize this thing, and, and those are the actual bullet points I wanted you to cover so wow. <laughs> I saw that and I thought I'm not going to let this go by. It was was perfect. Thank you so much. It was just the fitting end to this uh, uh, Town Hall Academy, Keep Your Woman Customers for Life. Thank you so much to Kim Kim Auernheimer, co-owner of CS Automotive in Brentwood, Tennessee, Kathleen Jerozic, Expertech Auto Repair in Englewood, Florida, and Jonathan Ortiz, Foreign Affairs Auto, West Palm Beach, Florida. (laughs) 